Welcome to another one, Donuts and Alcohol. I'm your boy Tatum. I got D8 with me right now. It's Donuts here. Donuts. Yeah, you missed it, bro. We had Donuts and Alcohol. Why do you think we got our name, bro? Oh, you a little, You a little late for the party, but it's all good. It's all good. We, we, uh, we still gonna hook you up and believe that. look out for you. Look out for you. So D8. My fucking world is mine for the mind for the Fuck that shit that they talk. They talk. Girl, shit, man, I hate y'all. Told y'all about to take off, but I never take no days out. What is D8? How did how did that whole name come about? Um D my name, my name is Darian, so the D came from uh -huh. my first name. Um and eight is my favorite number. And turn it sideways, it's the infinity sign. Eight is the number from New Beginnings, and that's how I got that all together. Damn, like, when did you come up with that? You was like, like, you just, like, yo, let me turn this around and get this I was like design. 16, 17. Wow. Yeah. And so it was 16 and 17 the, the, the time you decided you wanted to pursue rap? I was like 15, maybe, when I started recording. Mm. And what, what actually pushed you to, to record? Um... Shit, I ain't really had nothing to do. I was getting in trouble. I was trying to play football. Hated that shit. <laughs> I mean, it was cool, but fuck that shit. Um, and then, like, I always liked music. I grew up in a church and sang in the little kids' choir and all that. So it's always been there. So, so you low-key got, got vocals, too, then? Somewhere some, I, I can carry a little slight. tune in the bucket if I got to, <laughs> but yeah, it's um, it's 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 been there since since forever. But mm -hmm. since I was about fifteen, that's when I started recording. So when you were fifteen, is there any like artist that that stood out that really you like, yo, I got to do this because fucking. Cameron and Dipset was hot back then, but like, is it Little any Wayne? Artist? Wayne. Little Wayne. Carter's dedication, yeah, all of them. Carter's, for real, was uh, Drought 3. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Drought 3 and from, what was it? Like, We Taking Over and what was that, like, 05, 06? Yeah, that was a while ago. Yeah, it's 12 Man, years like ago. 10 plus years. Yeah, 12 years ago. That's yeah. crazy. So you actually, like, you heard Wayne and you was like, yo, I feel like I can do this too. And then plus you just had Like, I was literally, time. like, I was literally taking his verses and just rewriting them with my words. Mm -hmm. Like, same flow. And then that's how I learned how to rap. So. All right. So would you say Wayne yeah. is, like, your, in your uh, top five right now? Number two. Who's number one? Jay-Z, of course. Really? Yeah. Wow. And what about three? The next three is, like, out of order. Okay. Who are they? Uh, we got Jay Z, Wayne, and then KRS One, Andre Three Thousand, Kanye West. Interesting. I ain't even gonna lie. I was not expecting KRS One. I thought she was gonna say like, yeah, it's fucking. Like my pops used to play KRS One and Too Short all day. It's a terrible combination, but. <laughs> Especially when you're growing up in the church, yeah. Shout out to yeah. Too Short and KRS One for that one. <laughs> but yeah, it was dope. So that's what's up. That's that what's up. So when you when you wanted to pursue rap, rap, like for real, for real, was it like any any like a pushback from your family because you did grow up in the church? Not really. It was you know do your thing. But yeah. They didn't Still really. Support you, yeah. They didn't really care for it, but they was like you know. You ain't doing, you're not getting in trouble. As long as you're staying out of trouble. Yeah. Like, go for it. Right. That's pretty much how that would still, mm, they more supportive of it now than they were back mm -hmm. then because they see I'm making a little bit of money off of it now. They see so. the progression and stuff, yeah. the growth coming with it. Yep. So that's all that. 
you know how it is. I already know. <laughs> hey, I mean, you, you got you to, gotta, like, push the fam to believe it. Yeah. First, they're going to be like, yeah. Then they say, OK, OK. I've been trying to tell you that all along, Mom. It's like, <laughs> yeah. OK, so you got this uh, this ugly movement. Yeah. I would say it's, I would say it's like, it's, it's a movement, basically, right? It turned into that, yeah. How did that, what is you, you got to love yourself? How did um, that Pretty much, I put out an album, mixtape, whatever you want to call it. Um, put it out on my birthday this year, mm -hmm. my 23rd birthday. Um, and it was, it took me maybe like five years to put that together. And it was yeah. just, like I had, like I had a daughter, I got a three-year-old mm -hmm. daughter, she'd be four in January. Um, and just going through that, going through things with baby mama, my mom, my house caught on fire, my senior year of high school, shit like that. So it was a lot of shit going mm -hmm. on and that just helped me make the music that's on that project. And it was just like a, it was like a self-reflecting thing, really. Uh, and like I was gonna call it ugly, honestly, without the acronym at first. And then I like Googled acronyms and then I found, bang, you gotta love yourself. And it's like, all right, that's stuck. And it made sense with the music yeah. that I put out on there. So you was gonna call it ugly in the beginning, why? Like why, why ugly? Why not like some, some, <laughs> some like light, I guess, you know? Um, I guess it was just like, I guess like self-esteem issues, I guess, mm. growing up, stuff like that. But just rapping and stuff helped that out and that from, you know, just meeting people and, you know, just doing that. But yeah, just like, I guess it was just like growing up, self-esteem right. and all that weird emotional kind of stuff. All the puberty <laughs> shit. Yeah, come, yeah, coming into adulthood, manhood. All that. I understand, I understand. Now, now, you mentioned that, you know, you, you've been through some, some struggles in the last five years. Like, any other person would just, like, scrap the project. You're like, yo, yo, let's start over. Let's get, you know, nah, clean I slate and everything. I scrapped, like, four projects mm -hmm. to make this project. But you still kept songs from five years ago? I kept one song. Oh, okay, only one. Okay. Yeah. Like, I still put out songs, but... As far as putting it on that project, I kept one song. And that was, what, This World, This Motherfucking World Is Mine For The Taking. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. the only one. Um, why do you think it was it was important to keep that in the project? Um, it was kind of like, if you listen to the project, it's probably one of the more aggressive songs. Mm -hmm. And, um... It was just like a grittiness to it that I that that just stuck with the stuck with the rest of the sound of the project that brought it all together. So it sounds good. Nice, nice. And you from uh, Cincinnati, of course. Which which uh, side of Cincinnati? Forest Park. Forest Park. Okay. Do you think Cincinnati is uh, receptive of 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 homegrown talent like they should? Yes and no. It's like they know it's there. Um, <clears throat> like they, like you know, like obviously we're here. Mm -hmm. um, so it's people that's listening, but we got people that have spend two hundred dollars to get through an express line to see Cardi B at the club, but they won't spend ten dollars to come see me at Northside Yacht Club. Why do you think that is though? I don't know. <laughs> I can't yeah, answer that's, that question. That's, that's interesting. You're right, because that they'd be packed for Cardi B. But if when it's like local talent that's lined up, you got like right. A I mean, then it's like it's, like they complain to like, up. oh, it's nothing to do. It's nothing to do out here. I want something different to do. It's literally something different to do every weekend. Somebody's putting on a show, whether it's a poetry slam or open mics. This show y'all just put together now, anything is always something to do. But if you're not looking, 
you just gonna be on mm -hmm. Facebook talking about it. it. Ain't shit to do. Just talking, but you ain't right. really doing nothing <laughs> about it, right? Right. But it's 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 certain. It's it's getting. For me, it's gotten better. I've get I got more people to come out to yeah. support what I'm doing and support the people that I'm doing songs with and whatnot. But it seems like it's a good make me transition into this. Like you got nominated for the Cincinnati Entertainment Awards for best yeah, video. So I mean, that was somebody rocking with you. You know what I'm saying? Right, you got that, a, that a good a, amount of people here in Cincinnati rocking with you. Yeah, that was that kind of caught me by surprise, honestly, because. One I put out the video like six months ago, and it mm -hmm. was like randomly. I think who was it? Alex Zayla. She uh, inboxed me. She was like, "Yo, you got nominated for an award." I was like, "What are you talking about?" <laughs> right? What the hell? And then it's like it was it was pretty cool, but you know I don't think I, nah I didn't win it, but shit I got nominated. But just nominated, yeah. like the city recognize that right. that piece like they still like you said they still know you here so that's like you know more of a buzz to right. to uh keep you going and moving forward so you look seem like you got a lot of momentum in 2017 how you going how you going to keep that up in 2018 um i got a couple videos i got one about to drop for this world um i got an ep i'm working on i got um Pretty much the business that's gonna be behind Ugly and my next project and whatnot that's gonna be uh, called Identity Crisis, and I'm bringing that out sometime next year. Um, I got a couple more videos to shoot off of Ugly. Well, really one more, Aretha Dershi. And, um <laughs> We'll see what happens from there. Mm. So I got music. I got maybe 25, 30 songs nice. just sitting. Nice. So we'll see what happens. OK, so you named the top five rappers, Jay-Z, Karis, who are, who are like some rappers that you listen to heavily, like right now, like the like the little Uzis and, and the Triple Reds and some types? <laughs> you, you into that? Yeah, I mean, like my favorite now might be Kodak. Why? Why do you think Kodak is is winning right now? Well, technically not me in jail, but but you know what I mean. Before that, he was. Um, I don't know. He shit, he just be busy dropping heat. It's catchy. It's good music. It it kind of remind me like a I'm a Boosie fan, little little Boosie. Yeah. So it's like it kind of got like a nostalgic feel to it, but it's more polished in a sense to me. Wow, I didn't think about that. He does sound like like they from the same city. I thought Boosie was from New Orleans. Baton Rouge. Baton, but Kodak from Florida, ain't he? Kodak is from Florida. Yeah, that is right. But I, I but mean, but they I, from the same people. They're the same people. Let's just say that. Yeah. They're the same. They're interchangeable. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> like vocally, very interchangeable. Mm -hmm. But they're from the same region of the <laughs> nation, I guess I could say. Yeah. Uh, what's that, South, Southeast? You can say that. Yeah. So when when people listen to your music, what's one thing you want them to take away? Like, you know, be like, yo, he's, you know, give me hype, he give me conscious. Like, what's it's, what's that one message you want people to take away? Or is it like each it's song not, has its own message? I mean, each song is going to give you its own thing, but all in all, it's going to be honesty, like, mm -hmm. throughout the whole thing. It's like, I'm not making a lot of stuff up. I'm not, I'm not, I can't, <laughs> like I can't yeah. force myself to just make stuff up. It takes me a long time to write songs for that reason. But. Yeah, speaking of that, what's the uh, uh, creative process like Do you? Um, like, some, like I said, sometimes I can write a song in 10, 15, 20 minutes. Sometimes it might take six months. <laughs> Just depending on what it is, but that's just how it goes. I usually I'm writing to a beat. Um, sometimes I'm like lately I've been trying to write songs for other people, so trying to get into the songwriting thing. Mm -hmm. um, particularly like female artists, because mm -hmm. I can write a song. If I'm gonna write a song for a nigga, I'm gonna write it for myself. Right. Basically, but. It's just taking a different angle that 
I don't know. It's weird, but just taking a different angle at how I'm writing stuff mm -hmm. now. But for when I'm doing stuff myself, I can sit in the studio for an hour and a half and I get something done. Nice. Now, this is completely off the wall, but it just made me think about it. You do, you songwrite. So what if it's like, it's an up and coming rapper and he's like, yo, I need a song. And he come to you and like, can you write me a dope song? Mind you, he's a rapper. So, you know, that's a little bit unorthodox when you in hip hop as far as ghostwriting. Would you, is that something you would like consider doing? And like, of course, like he's not gonna give you credit because he want to take it for himself. But... Facts. Like, like a Quentin Miller Drake type yeah, thing? Yeah, yeah, something like that. Where, um, but like dude just be like, yo, this rap is dope. Like, would you like go behind him and be like, yo, I wrote that shit? I mean, I, you better put me in them credits. <laughs> I need my <laughs> money. Credit my shit. Like, I just need my credit at the end of the day, really, like. If you need to, if you want to be the voice of it, then by all means, be that. But but we talking about a rapper though. You know, rappers don't get credits like that. Like maybe if you if you do it for like a like an R and B singer, then yeah, it's different. But if he like <laughs> from another rapper to another rapper, like how you gonna write my own shit? But like I said, dude, come to you like, yo. I'm a nice guy, but I'm gonna get my credits. Still get the credits on it. <laughs> I heard that, bro. I heard that. Uh, so people can check out the project. Uh, where it, we're at? What's your uh, media outlet, social media, all that good stuff? SoundCloud, Bandcamp. You can search D A D hyphen E I G H T. Ugly. You gotta love yourself. It'll pop up. It's on SoundCloud and Bandcamp right now. Find me on Facebook. Uh, what's my name? My face. My Facebook name is Swooty McDermott. <laughs> Swooty McDermott. So you got like a whole lot of aliases, man. Yeah. I feel like it's just D A. And Swooty McDermott. And then ugly though, people can like, you know, not call I mean, you ugly, but like. I mean, you can call anybody ugly. But I, but I mean, they correlate that because that's the sort of like the brand <laughs> to with that. I, I mean, know. yeah, because like I walk down the street, it'd be a random motherfucker. I got, I always have on a shirt, and they'd be like, "What's up, ugly?" I'm like, "Who the fuck are you talking to?" <laughs> and then I look at my shirt, like, cool, but <laughs> it happens all the time. It happens all the time. Nice, nice. So, uh, when is when is the next performance here in the city? Today. For real? <laughs> yeah. Where at? Um, it's in Blue Ash. It's at um my uncle put together an event, like a Christmas event. Uh, it's called Merry Sitmas, and it's do like, Christmas songs too. Who me? Yeah. Nah, but shit. Oh. You know, next year when I drop this Swooty tape, we gonna we might have a Swooty Swooty Claw special. Hell <laughs> 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 no, I'm um, with it. I'm with it. But nah, um, he just asked me to just come out and do something for him. Okay. So I'm, I'm gonna thinking you're gonna do like some um, uh, Run DMC, you know. Nah, Christmas special, you know. I ain't. Hello, Cool J, Rock the Bells, or something like that. You nah, know? my music. I might make an angry Christmas Christmas song or something. I can't. <laughs> On some Grinch, yeah, some Grinch yeah, type yeah. shit. Yeah, uh -huh. the Swooty that stole Christmas. <laughs> I like that though. I like that. <laughs> we gonna Low do key that. Keep that. Yeah, we gonna do that. I'm with that. I'm with that. That's in the vault now. Shout out to my man D8. Check him oh, out. Oh yeah, follow the me shit. on IG. Um, what's my Instagram? D underscore E I G H T and the number eight. Um, Twitter D underscore E I G H T ugly the number eight. Facebook Swooty McDermott, young you know young Swooty all McDermott. That shit. All that all as far as merchandise, people yeah. can people merchandise. can buy sweaters, right? You can hit me up on all Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. I make sure you get you yours. How much are they? $20? $20 for a long sleeve t-shirt, $30 for a hoodie. Nice, get you nice. On. So what if somebody, they, they ugly, but they just want like, they all they got is 10, they can't get them, bro? Um, you, I, you, I might can get you, you like, all right, all right. A I mean, as long as you ain't just like, no, <laughs> but you actually work with them and stuff. Yeah, they, yeah, we can do something. We can definitely make something work out. I bet. There you have it, man. Check them out. Check them out. Hey, Nothing hey, in the hey, books. Hey. Donuts and alcohol. <laughs> <laughs>